Hi, my name is Kareen Browdy. Um, for the first question, I chose how long do we have to wear a mask to protect ourselves? Do pathogens disappear from the seasonal infection and why? Um, so as many of us know, coronavirus has taken the world by storm. With many of the states and countries requiring masks or face protectors to be worn in highly populated areas, it raises the question, why even wear a mask and for how long are we going to be required to? The Center of Disease Control, or the CDC, stated that wearing a cloth protector slash mask acts as a barrier for all the respiratory droplets being released by sneezing, coughing, or even talking. Therefore, reducing the amount of people coming into contact with a viral pathogen and reducing the amount of overall cases. But the real question is, how long will this be our new norm? Dr. Robert Redfield, CDC director, uh, has hopes that sometime in mid-2021 or when a vaccine is widely available. Now, because COVID is a viral infection, its pathogens invade the host cells and uses the cell to replicate, producing more viruses. Excuse me. Therefore, giving us the reason why it is spread so rapidly and why antibiotics will not have any effect on the infection. In other words, our bodies <clears throat> need to build its own immunity to the specific virus strand. Now, with this being said, Dr. Eric Topol, founder and director of the Scripps Research Translational Institute, stated vaccines don't render mucosal immunity. You could still harbor the virus. It protects from the illness, so we could actually get more carriers in the vaccination phase. So even though the vaccine will assist in the treatment of the illness related to the virus, you <clears throat> could still be carrying the strand or traces of the pathogen around which means we need to take responsibility and continue wearing our masks. My second question was, how can we reduce the struggle time for learning? List the best, list the best tips that really work and are innovative and scientifically proven to have the impact of, on our metacognition. Well, metacognition is a regulatory system that allows us to control and understand our cognitive performance. With that said, what are some exercises that we can practice to allow ourselves to better impact our metacognition and reduce the struggle with time of learning? Well, it may be easier than you think. According to the article, Metacognition and Learning Strategies for Instructional Design by Connie Malamed, some examples of metacognitive strategies are ask questions, foster self-reflection, encourage self-questioning, self-explanation, and thinking out loud. So let's break these down one by one by using college courses as an example. Let's start with asking questions. Once you have been introduced to a new topic or chapter, you would take notes and write down any questions that present themselves along the way while reading the new material. Not only will this help you better understand the new material in depth, but also clear up any misunderstandings or confusion along the way. This is also a part of self-reflection and self-questioning. Taking a moment after or even during the first review of a chapter is important because it allows us to obtain information as well as critically analyze or our own assumptions about the material. Now that doesn't mean that you have to just read a chapter out of a book. Even bouncing ideas and theories between one another is proven to help increase the understanding of the material as well as memorizing the important details of the chapter. Once you build a true understanding of the material, <clears throat> you can practice your knowledge by explaining the chapter in your own words, finalizing the fact that you feel confident enough in the material to teach it. My third question was, if you had invented the radio, the telephone, or the aircraft, what would you have done differently in the invention? Um, Modern technologies have made today's life both convenient and time-saving, but the world didn't always work so effortlessly. The invention of the radio, telephone, and airplane have a tremendous impact on today's everyday life, but what could have made these inventions easier? The airplane was originally invented in 1903 by the Wright brothers and has since gone through multiple alterations to accommodate the world today. But what could have made the invention easier? Instead of the difference in design, I think the invention process itself could have been easier for the Wright brothers if they had more accessibility to communicate with the aerodynamic scientists and engineers. Much like the metacognitive strategy of thinking out loud, if the Wright brothers were able to bounce ideas off, the, off and communicate to other engineers and scientists, would it, this have increased the invention process of the airplane or even the original design altogether? In my opinion, I would think it would have had a been it would have been beneficial to have contact with scientists from all around the world 
because you are receiving feedback from people who have experienced different experiments and have studied different subject matter that could have increased both the production and overall design to achieve the designs that are more like the modern day planes and help the time. 